But before we get into it, I want to say this episode is presented by Prize Picks. Be sure to visit prizepicks.com or use the app today and use the code BTJ when you sign up to get a $100 deposit match. What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Your guys, Derek and Cody, with you as always. And guys, we wanted to talk about surprise cuts for the Indianapolis Colts coming up soon, actually. Uh, I know that they have one more preseason game before the surprise cuts will happen, but you know, we could always look to see who uh, might not be making the roster, who we think could be that surprise one to get cut. So we're going to go ahead and chat about that right now, guys. First name first. And it's a name that Cody, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm surprised I'm even talking about it because I, I was so adamant that this guy was going to be finding his way potentially back to number one status at his position. But now I'm starting to have concerns with the injuries and the lack of snaps and where he is on the depth chart currently. And that's Jelani Woods. Um, I'm very, very surprised by it because like I said, a few weeks ago, I was talking about, I would feel Jelani is the most capable to take the number one spot again, but Jelani has been running with the second team and even the third team. And He's not been getting targets. He's not been getting involved in the system that much. And on top of it, he's the one guy in this group that he's always dealing with an injury. It's, it just doesn't matter what it is at this point. You're, you're always the one guy that's going to be the least accounted for when it comes to it. So I don't know. I mean, is that a, would that be a surprise to you? that Jelani could be one of those guys that potentially gets cut when cuts come around? Yeah, I mean, I think we're both a little bit shocked at just how Jelani has not done anything so far. Like, absolutely nothing. I know he's coming off that serious injury, but <clears throat> Derek, it's kind of bizarre how he just has not seen the field at all. Uh, I mean, I guess we know that, like, he wasn't a, you know, Shane Sykin pick, so that's definitely a thing to factor in there, but I'm just surprised that Jelani, frankly, has looked as bad as he has. Like, he just does not seem like the same player that he was. Like, I know he had some struggles his rookie season, you know, earlier on in the season, which makes me hopeful that maybe he can still put it together. But you're right, man. He is completely buried on this depth chart right now. I mean, when you look at it, I think really the only other tight end that you would say he might have the advantage on right now is probably Will Mallory. And even Will Mallory is getting some snaps, too. So, and it doesn't help, like you said, Jelani's had some injuries as well. You know, just got that injury in the preseason game. Fortunately, he is not, you know, it's not a major sort of thing. So hopefully he's back. I think this third preseason game is going to be critical for Jelani Woods. He's got to prove that he has some sort of worth on this roster. Because, Derek, you and I have talked at nauseum at this point. We know he has all the talent in the world. So to see him just really not doing a whole lot in this tight end room, it's honestly kind of bizarre how it's just kind of been this way so far for Jelani Woods. And so, I don't know, it's just, it'd be so hard to cut a guy that's as athletically gifted as Jelani Woods and, you know, still as young as Jelani Woods. But yeah, this this tight end roster right now, it's so, so deep. And so it'd be very interesting to see how many tight ends truly do the Indianapolis Colts keep. And, and you know, if they do, Jelani is probably going to be the last guy to make it on this tight end room. I mean, do they keep four? Do they keep five? Do they keep six? I mean, honestly, it's kind of crazy. And then if they keep five or six, who is that fifth or six? It's not going to be directly Jelani, right? So that's just kind of a weird thing. And so I'm obviously surprised to see how little he's contributed, how little snaps he's gotten so far. But again, Derek, like if the Colts feel like they have other guys, we know they have a lot of talent at tight end. So they feel like they have some other guys. I wouldn't be as shocked as maybe some seeing how little snap counts Jelani Woods has had. Um, but it's just crazy to think that it's come to this point where we're actually seriously talking about this because we did not think this was going to be the case. This is one that we were 
Well, we'll be honest. We were completely wrong on because, I mean, we thought Jelani had something more, but at this point it's shown nothing. And so it's just kind of bizarre that it's come to this point where we were completely off on our evaluation of Jelani Woods up to this point. Now, again, he has another preseason game to hopefully figure it out and maybe make a case. But as it stands right now, Derek, he might be on the outside looking in, which is just wild to even say that. Yeah, you're not kidding. All right, next name here, talk about Sam Ellinger. Uh, And based off of the quarterback rooms and everything else, I mean, I'll say this, Cody, clearly Ellinger has had some of the best performances in the preseason. And I think for me, I think that kind of is a little bit of a deceiving notion because, yeah, Ellinger has these amazing performances in the preseason. No one can deny that like that's his nickname at this point, Mr. August, right? Like that's, uh, that's what he is. And unfortunately, like, you know, we kind of have seen, I know in 2022, he clearly was the given the raw end of the stick, but I mean, Sam Ellinger has had very minimal opportunities to actually do something on the football field in regular season and he never did anything good. So I look to say that if you're going to see QB three, you would most likely think of someone like a Jason Bean that could potentially take that spot of QB three only because the skill set that you have with Jason Bean is something a little bit closer to Anthony Richardson's skill set than Sam Ellinger. Now that's not to suggest that Sam Ellinger can't run with the football. I totally get that he can, but I think that the ability to extend plays and the ability to do things in the red zone that are much similar to Anthony Richardson, I think that is more of a Jason Bean thing, which makes me think that he could get that QB three spot. What do you think? Is Ellinger a surprise cut here? You know, I don't think so, to be honest with you. I I can see the conversation, but I just think Sam Ellinger, he's been in, you know, he's been in the NFL for a number of years now. Yeah, he's not the most athletically gifted guy, but I still think he's a serviceable backup. Like, I think he'd be, he's a good third string quarterback to have at this point, right? Because, yeah, you don't want Sam Ellinger ideally out on the field at all, but. I feel like he's a kid who, yeah, he didn't have some great times in the regular season, but again, who would have in the situation he was thrown into? But I do think he, you know, he has shown some things, like you said, in the preseason. Again, I know it's just the preseason, but, you know, to have a guy like Sam Ellinger, who, who's been in the system a couple years now, who knows kind of how it runs, how it functions, who has some athletic ability, you know, running the football. We've seen him do it before. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily something where Sam Ellinger this year loses that third quarterback spot, but Jason Bean has certainly made a case for himself with his preseason. But again, he's an undrafted rookie for a reason. And I think Sam Ellinger definitely, I think still at this point probably has a leg up, but I could, I still see a scenario where they're both a part of the Indianapolis Colts, but I think right now I'd probably still give the edge to Sam Ellinger. Guys, football season is right around the corner. Definitely got to make sure you're getting in on the excitement with prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. You guys can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks, guys. You can turn $10 into $1,000 with any entries today on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. I mean, guys, look, I'm looking at some of these entries here. And if you're an Indianapolis Colts fan like myself, which you probably are because you're on here right now, well, I'm just looking at some of these season numbers here. And some of the stuff for Anthony Richardson, I have to get in on. Guys, we have one right here where it's seven and a half on the season rushing touchdowns for Anthony Richardson. Folks, Anthony Richardson had four rushing touchdowns in just 10 quarters of football last season. What do you think he's going to do this year when he's actually healthy and fully capable of going? Now, obviously, they're playing into the fact that they think he might get injured. Anthony Richardson doesn't. That seven and a half is an easy more when you want to talk 
into that one, guys. So make sure you are getting in on the action of getting some of these numbers for Anthony Richardson and other Colts players as well. Remember, guys, be sure to download the Prize Picks app today and use the code BTJ for your first deposit match up to $100. All right, uh, moving on here. We'll stick on the offensive side of the ball right now. And this might be one of the more controversial ones. And that is Blake Freeland. Now, I'll say right off the top, Cody, I don't think that he will be cut. But like you said with Ellinger, I could see the argument as to why this is true. Because, I mean... Him and Sills in these first two preseason games have been god awful. They've been terrible. And they're not even playing against the starters. They're playing against backups. And they've been terrible. And so I sit here and suggest to myself, your, your other teams around the NFL are going to have surprise cuts uh, here very soon. So when we're talking about these other teams cutting some of these players that you could see as more serviceable. You have to just accept that. Hey, like you took a chance on Blake Freeland and obviously he's still young and clearly he's new to the position, but he has a lot to learn before he's even remotely good enough to take over for Bernard Ryman. If Ryman goes down, we have seen it way too many times last year, Cody, I'd said this in the studs and duds video. I said that we gave Blake Freeland the benefit of the doubt in 2023 because he was a rookie. He was in a position he wasn't supposed to be in and he's playing against the best competition. They are the opposing teams always threw the best player they had at Blake Freeland. And that was Aaron Donald. That was miles Garrett. That was TJ Watt. I mean, it was, it was a lot of great players taking advantage of Blake Freeland. But now you're seeing it now, and he's getting dominated in training camp, and he's getting dominated in the preseason games against backups and backups of backups. So I look at it, and I'm like, you you can't possibly sit there and tell me there is not a single offensive lineman that's going to get cut in a week and a half from now and tell me they are not worthy of a spot over Blake Freeland and I know we don't have a ton of depth at the offensive line position, but Matt Gonsalves can be that swing tackle for you. Jake Witt, he hasn't been good, but he's certainly not been as bad as Blake Freeland. And you could obviously bring somebody else in who could come in and be a more serviceable player than Blake Freeland. So, I mean... I, I like I said, I don't think he's going to because it's Chris Ballard and how he views the offensive lineman. But I mean, would it shock you to see this happen? No, it really wouldn't because I mean, we know how critical Derek and how hard it is to find, you know, a quality swing tackle in this league. And so, yeah, it's definitely not something where I'm like, I don't think Chris Ballard's going to do it lightly. You know, I think there's going to be a plan in place. But again, Derek, I mean, at this point, you're probably concerned about the tackle depth right now because nobody, you know, has proven none of these backups at this point that they can be at least a serviceable tackle. Like none of them all. They've all struggled. But obviously, Blake Freeland's been the worst one by far in pass pro and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, you look at the some of the cuts and I'm like, you have to have a guy that can at least be serviceable in there. When, you know, if they need to step up, which we know, Derek, with the attrition of the NFL, there's it's probably pretty likely that at one of those tackle positions, you're going to need a guy to come in and play some decent amount of snaps during a game or a couple games this year. So, and, and again, you know, if Blake Freeland was showing improvements, I'd feel a lot better about it. And I was thinking, naturally, that's what we saw from a guy like Bernard Ryman from year one to year two. Yeah, he was not great his rookie season, but he made strides. Blake Freeland has apparently not made very many strides at all. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's concerning considering, you know, what we've seen from the different players, uh, players who have grown in their positions and who have become good players. You know, I give the rookies more of that benefit of the doubt because, again, they're figuring it out. You know, they're still – this is still their first offseason. Blake Freeland has, really doesn't have any excuses at this point, you know. Like, he doesn't really. And so, for the Colts, I'm like, do you really want to risk another – 
Blake Freeland, Miles Garrett situation again. Like, I'm not saying that whoever you sign is going to be able to hold their own, you know, great against him. But, you know, you need that guy that's going to step in and provide quality minutes if you need him to. And right now, if you needed him to, I'll be honest, Derek, at right or left tackle, you're screwed right now. Like, there's no way around it, you know? So I think it is has to be one of the top priorities for Indy, honestly, is looking for another guy. If Blake Freeland's going to be this bad against backups, I can only imagine what it's going to look like against starters. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. And you just need more tackle depth in general. So I wouldn't be shocked at all if Blake Freeland's cut, to be honest. Or if the Colts try him out somewhere else, maybe interior, I don't know at this point. But it's clear he can't play tackle in this league so far. Like, he just has not been able to. So, you know, hopefully the Colts figure it out there, and maybe he does, you know, slide inside a little bit or maybe they have another guy try some right tackle i don't know uh but as it stands right now yeah you can't have blake freeland playing as poor as he has there's no doubt if he continues i mean at the end of the day like you need players who can actually play competent football for you and if blake freeland can't do that i mean chris ballard's shown in the past Derek, he's not afraid to cut you know mid-round picks you know even the same year so i wouldn't be shocked at all if blake freeland's no longer a colt and honestly <laughs> For a lot of fans, I know they'd say, probably say good riddance at this point. So uh, we'll see on that, Derek. But no, I wouldn't be shocked at all with Blake Freeland. The only thing I could see is if, like you said, Chris Ballard gets a little bit like, I don't know. You know, we've seen it do with a couple of players where they pull held onto a player um, they probably shouldn't have. Like that would be the only scenario. But again, you know, if he's going to be a liability out there, why even waste a roster spot with him? All right, moving to the other side, and last player we could talk about here brought up Rodney Thomas, and the only reason I would say it would be a surprise cut is because the Colts don't have a lot of depth at the safety position right now, and you know, especially not good ones, um, because the Colts are still trying to figure out their safety position, even though I think we kind of all know where it's going at this point. But, you know, Rodney Thomas is starting to fall behind in those reps, Cody. And he just keeps uh, having more and more issues. And I think that we're, we might see a situation where Rodney Thomas, you know, if if not cut, I mean, he's going to be on the back end of this depth chart and it's going to be bad for him. Yeah, and that and that's another thing with just numbers. It's like, who else do you really have back there? You know, that, that's the biggest question mark. So that would be the biggest like pro of keeping Rodney Thomas is like he's just another guy that's been in the system and he's just another body at this point, you know. But yeah, obviously you don't want him to see the field because he was borderline unplayable last year, Derek. So I don't think there's this I think he's clearly a backup right now. And I don't know, it's hard for me to cut a guy that's, you know, at least been in your system and shown at times that he can be serviceable. So I don't know what he's going to be in year three, but you know, year one, he was actually decent year two. That's a different story. So I don't know. It's hard for me to see them cutting him with just the amount of numbers, but again, maybe that's a focus for them in the waiver wire. I could see that being a scenario as well, uh, because I'm sure there's still a lot of safeties out there. And I know Chris Ballard hasn't necessarily ruled it out, you know, by any stretch, even though they do believe uh, in Nick cross as that their safety, like you still need decent depth back there. So could yeah. it be another, you know, kind of like Rodney McLeod type of situation where you sign a veteran for a year just to add some quality depth back there? I, I wouldn't be upset at that at all. So, but yeah, yeah uh, Rodney Thomas is just it's, – it's an interesting one because you're like uh, – you don't want him to see the field, but you might need him to at times. You never know. Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let us know in the comments uh, what kind of player you think could be a surprise cut as well. But that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, go Colts.